This video talks about the autosomal recessive disease pattern and how you can use Hardy Weinberg equation to solve those autosomal recessive disease pattern questions. So, whenever we're talking about autosomal recessive disease pattern, we're usually dealing with two heterozygote parents. Now, a reasonable question here is why are we not using um, one parent who are homozygous, uh, two homozygous parents, okay? Why are we not using that kind of pattern? And I'll show you why. So look at this scenario where there is two big A's and two small A's. Now, this parent is homozygous. This parent is also homozygous. So that is a very reasonable, um, reasonable um, kind of two, two choices, okay? So when you made these two parents, you can have possibility of small a, big S, small a, big S, small a, big S, small a, and big S, small a, right? So they're all making the same kind of offsprings, which are heterozygotes, okay? Now, are they going to, are they going to really produce an offspring who will manifest the disease? Not really, because it's only the small a, small a together, which is going to manifest as the disease, and these are just going to be carriers, okay? So we don't really see a disease pattern from these kind of, um, these kind of uh, pairing. Now, what if we talk about one, one homozygous and the other heterozygous? What kind of pattern are we going to see then? So now look here, we have one parent who is heterozygous and the other parent which who is homozygous. Now we are going to have two big A's here. Okay, so this is going to be, this is not a carrier. They are not going to have the disease, right? And the next one is going to be big A, small A, big A, big A, and big A, small A. So again, these two big A's doesn't even have the gene to cause the disease. These two are making heterozygous, heterozygote uh, offspring. So you can see that both these two patterns are making heterozygote uh, population. So there is more and more heterozygotes in an autosomal recessive disease pattern that we will be seeing. So that's why whenever you're doing questions associated with autosomal recessive disease, just take the fact that both the parents are going to be heterozygote heterozygotes unless they mention something specific. So now let's say we have big A, small a here and big A, small a. And the disease pattern we're going to see is big A, big A, big A, small a, big A, small a, and small a, and small a. And which of these four is going to cause the disease? This one. Because this is the autosomal recessive pattern. Now there's two numbers that are very important to remember. And those two numbers are one-fourth and two-third, okay? Now, I would just commit these two numbers to memory so that you don't really waste time thinking about it when you're dealing with an autosomal recessive disease pattern. And I'll explain you how we are getting these two numbers. So the first number, one-fourth, is a probability of the offspring having the disease, okay? So look at this box, okay? Uh, out of the four choices, there is only one choice when the, both the parents are heterozygotes to have the disease, right? So that's why it's the chance of having the disease with two heterozygote uh, parents is one-fourth. And so that's the first number, so that's done. What about the second number, two-thirds? Now when we take this out, this is the one that has the disease, we have three choices left. So this two-third is the number for the probability of being a carrier. So the probability of being a carrier of the, of the three choices that's left is going to be two out of three, okay? So that's the two-third number that we're talking about. So that is also taken care of. So these are the two numbers I would just commit to memory and be able to interpret, but we should be able to commit to memory so that we don't really have to think about it actively when do, we are doing questions. Now let's jump onto a question. The question says that there is uh, two heterozygote um, Actually, the question doesn't say that. The question says that the frequency of heterozygotes in a certain population is going to be 0.1. So if there is two, um, if there is two, um, two people uh, from this uh, certain population made, what is the probability that the first child is going to have Tay-Sachs? So now again, 
We know that Tay-Sachs is an autosomal recessive disease, so we're just going to assume that there's, it's going to be two heterozygotes who are going to be mating. So now the probability of two heterozygotes for, uh, to make an offspring to have the disease is going to be, first of all, the probability of uh, having an offspring whose disease is going to be one-fourth, or in other words, it's going to be 0 0.25, right? Now that's a probability of having a diseased offspring. Now if both the parents are going to be heterozygotes, uh, we have to look at the frequency of the population and the frequency of population for that particular population is going to be 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 for one parent, 0 0.1 for the other parent. So the probability of the two heterozygotes to make with the disease is going to be 0 0.0025.